Thank you, Chancellor Christensen and the Board of Regents, the university. This really is an incredible honor. Uh, it, uh, it means a great deal to me, uh, especially I, I'm, I'm not an academic. Uh, in fact, I was a guy who at uh, USC wasted countless hours studying, you know, B movies like uh, Motel Hell and, uh, you know, Attack of the Crab Monsters. So hopefully this balances something out in the universe. Uh, my professional life is in. Los Angeles, uh, and I am a screenwriter. I get paid to make stuff up. Uh, and I love writing for TV, but uh, on, on some days, it, in all honesty, can be a total dumpster fire, right? There are nonstop rewrites, there are preposterous deadlines, wild personalities, to put it mildly. But the distractions are endless. And so for me, the great thing about working in Hollywood but living here is that it sort of puts all of those distractions in perspective for me, and it, it, it helps me remember that my only real goal is, is just to tell a good story. And for me, the best part of any story is the beginning, right? Because it is filled with firsts, the first kiss, the first crazy roommate, the first day as a college graduate. And today you're starting to write your story. And I can assure you, it is the beginning of what will be a wild and unexpected ride. It's, uh, as we say in the business, fade in. I wish that I had some great, you know, sage advice, some wisdom I could offer. And I thought about this a lot. And parents, you're, feel free to cover your ears for this part. But re really, my only advice I have is this. Don't get a job, okay? Now, I don't mean don't work or make money, do both, but whatever you do next, this story you're about to write, this dream that I pray you will chase down, man, you better love it, you know? Do yourself a favor and don't worry about the money because if you're doing something you love, something that, that makes you want to get up out of bed in the morning, I promise the rest will fall into place. All the, the rent money and the car payments and, and the dental plans, all that nonsense adult stuff will work itself out if you love what you do. Uh, when I moved to Hollywood, I literally knew nobody. I mean, not a soul. Uh, by the time I graduated from USC, I had a degree in film production, which I swiftly used to land a job at Universal Studios. <clears throat> valet parking cars. And um, uh, uh, one night, uh, I kid you not, after an eight-hour shift, I made $13 in tips. I am sure my parents were so proud. Um, but, but I was writing during the day, and I was, I was treating my writing like a career, and at night, I was making money, although not a lot. And, and on paper, it made zero sense. I, I was a college-educated valet parking attendant with over $130,000 in student loans, okay? By the way, um, I, I did actually park David Hasselhoff's car, and as a kid, I was a huge Knight Rider fan. It's probably too young for any of you guys, but for me, it was like driving, uh, driving Kit, um, uh, which was amazing, but uh, the Hoff didn't tip. Uh, uh, the screenwriter, William Goldman, revered screenwriter, he wrote, uh, screenwriter. He wrote Butch Cassidy, The Sundance Kid, uh, The Princess Bride, Misery. This guy's great. And in 1983, he wrote a book called Adventures in the Screen Trade, which was sort of his musings about his life in Hollywood as a writer. And one of the things that he said about Hollywood, and it is true in life, he said, nobody knows anything. So you have to believe in your story, whatever it is. And when people t tell you it's not going to happen, Please remember William Goldman, nobody knows anything. And eventually, I did graduate from my job, valet parking cars at Universal. Um, actually, I was, I was uh, fired, and so I, I, uh, uh, I got a job at the old spaghetti factory on Sunset, which weirdly did feel sort of like a promotion because it was on Sunset Boulevard. But I kept telling myself nobody knows anything, right? Don't quit. And gradually, this thing that I love, writing, started to weirdly pay the bills. Whatever the, whatever the movies were, whether they were made or not, I had the opportunity to, to write for Angelina Jolie and Halle Berry and Bruce Willis and, and Julia Roberts, and it was great. And you're going to have similar success if you just stay authentic to who you are. I just wrote something that, that surprised me and I thought was weird, and, 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 it, and it felt silly and fun and like me. And that script was this TV show called The Blacklist. And, and all of the sudden, 
I'm working with James Spader, and I have an office at Paramount. And I'm not, I'm not <laughs> waiting tables at the old spaghetti factory. I'm feverishly rewriting scripts at a little cafe on Sunset Boulevard as, as LA City buses are going by with billboards of my show on the side of the bus, a show which is shooting in New York, where there are now nearly 400 people working to bring to life this script that I wrote in Nebraska, in my underwear, by the way. <laughs> the thing is that this thing I was mildly ashamed of, moving home, is actually what makes me unlike anyone else in Hollywood. The, do you know how many TV writers there are in Kearney? That's part of my story. It is what makes me different. And your story is what's going to make you different, not just with your career, but with a life balance. You did it. You're a college graduate, and nobody can ever take that away from you. You are off to an incredible start, but it is just that. It is a start. It is a beginning. And it is time for you to go write your story. So make it one that only you can tell, flaws and all. And when people tell you you're nuts, remember, nobody knows anything. Okay? Congratulations. Thank you.